Hello, this is Mrs. Tim again, and today I'm going to be talking about lesson 11-2, multiplying fractions and whole numbers. Your learning goals are going to be to represent a whole number as a fraction, multiply the two numerators, multiply the two denominators, then once you have an answer, if it's an improper fraction, you're going to need to convert it into a mixed number or a whole number, and then always simplify if needed. So this is kind of the steps that you're going to need to go through when you multiply fractions and whole numbers. And we're going to go ahead and start practicing. But before that, here's some vocabulary. A fraction represents an amount greater than zero and less than one whole. The numerator is the number on the top part of the fraction, and the denominator is at the bottom of the fraction. And we're going to start with an example. Mrs. Heckenbach wants to triple. Now remember, triple means three. So Mrs. Heckenbach wants to triple her lasagna recipe. That sounds yummy. If the recipe calls for two-thirds cup of cheese, how much cheese will she need if she triples that amount? So this is going to be written as three times two-thirds, just how it says. And if you look, it says go through the objective step by step. If you've noticed, the first thing that we need to do is represent the whole number as a fraction. So here's my whole number, and I'm going to represent it as a fraction by putting a one underneath it. Now, the reason why we put a one as the denominator, because since that is improper, if we take one into the numerator, one goes into three three times. So as you can see there, we have three wholes. So putting a one as a denominator does not change the meaning of it. It still keeps it as three wholes. So now we have three over one times two thirds. The second step is to multiply the two numerators. So now we're going to take three times two, which is six, and then we're going to multiply the denominators. One times three is three. Now it says convert any improper fractions into a mixed number or a whole number. So that means we're going to need to take the denominator, which is three, into the numerator. And three goes into six two times. Two times three is six. So there is no remainder. So that means six thirds is two. And that is our final answer. So two wholes is our answer. So now we're ready to do practice problems. So your first practice problem you need to do is what is one-fifth of 40. So if you need to, go back and look at your learning goals that you've just wrote and follow those step by step to help you solve this problem. So go ahead and push pause and push play when you're ready. Now, the answer to your practice problem was 8. Did you write 8? If so, wonderful job. If not, let's go through the steps of the learning goal. So, What is one-fifth of 40? So I'm going to write one-fifth of 40. And now if you remember, the first thing we need to do is represent our whole number as a fraction. So I'm going to put a 1 underneath the 40. That still means 40 wholes, but now we have it set up as a fraction in order to multiply them. Then I'm going to multiply the numerators. So 1 times 40 is 40. And then I'm going to multiply the denominators. 5 times 1 is 5. Now, I need to convert any improper fractions into a mixed number or a whole number. So I, since this is improper, the numerator is bigger than the denominator. <clears throat> I'm going to take 5 into 40. <clears throat> and 5 goes into 40 8 times. And 8 times 5 is 40. So looky there, it comes out even again. And we get our answer of eight holes. So we're going to do another practice problem. This practice problem says 25 times 4 fifths. So go ahead, get out your learning goals, follow them step by step, and complete this problem. Push play when you're ready to go on. Did you write 20? If so, good job. 
we're going to get the chance to go over it. If you remember, our problem was 25 times 4 fifths. So I'm going to write down 25 times 4 fifths. And I'm going to go through my steps. Represent a whole number as a fraction. So I'm going to put a 1 as the denominator. Multiply the two numerators. So what is 25 times 4? So over here on the side, just so I can visualize it, I'm going to write it this way. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 2 is 8. Plus 2 is 10. And it would be great if you guys could just think, oh, 25 cents? You need four of those to get 100. So 25 times 4 is 100. And now 1 times 5 is 5. So I have 100 over 5, which is improper. So now I need to change that improper fraction into a mixed number or a whole number. So I'm going to take 5 into 100. And I get 20, 20 holes, which was our answer. Okay, here's our practice word problem. Kyle has eight eggs, I'm going to mark that information, in the refrigerator. He will need to use three-fourths of them to make an omelet. How many eggs will he need to use? So I see three-fourths of Eight is how many he's going to need to use. So how many eggs will that be then? What is three-fourths of eight? If you've got six eggs, you are correct. Let's go ahead and work that out, three-fourths of eight. The first thing we need to do is make our whole number of fractions. So we're going to put a one as the denominator. Then we're going to multiply the numerators. 8 times 3 is 24. Then we're going to multiply the denominators. 4 times 1 is 4. Someone's trying to call me. We'll answer that in just a second. And now that is improper. So we need to change that into a mixed number. So we're going to take our denominator 4 into 24. Mixed number or whole number, I should say. And 4 goes into 24 six times. And that is even. So that means my answer is six eggs. And I am correct. Now is the challenge yourself. But this has been pretty easy. It's always fun. Claire has 639 eggs in the refrigerator. That's a lot of eggs. She's going to be baking a lot. She will need to use two-thirds of those eggs. So we have 639 eggs. She's going to need to use two-thirds of those eggs to make brownies for the class. So how many eggs will she use? You're going to need to come to school tomorrow with your math journal, and you're going to need to work this problem out. And please remember to label your answer. Now, let's finish up. Please review your learning goals, which we did several times throughout this uh, PowerPoint. You probably have memorized by now. Do you have your learning goals written in your journal? How, and don't forget your vocabulary. We had vocabulary too. Make sure you have that wrote down. Do you have your practice problems written in your journal and solved? Now you need to complete the challenge problem. Bring it to class tomorrow and we've completed lesson 11-2. Good job tonight, guys. See you in the morning.